Be sure to be notified of new. Shalom, family. Uh, let me turn my volume down. There was some commercial. <laughs> okay. Can everybody hear me okay? Shalom, family. Okay, this is, we're going to talk about understanding and balance and how it cancels out confusion. I want to explain some things and I want you to pay attention to what I'm talking about here. Okay, because it's, this is very crucial to your growth. Okay, um, can everyone hear me okay first of all? I have a fan here that's blowing on me, so if it sounds a little buzzy, that's what you're hearing. Good. Okay. Great. All right. We're going to talk a little bit about understanding and balance and how it cancels out confusion. And I, I get this, I get a lot of emails from people and a lot of people talk about how this doctrine has confused them and that doctrine has got to have them a little confused and they go from teacher to teacher and they get confused about this, confused about that. And so I want to talk to you a little bit how you could cancel out all this confusion now you really don't have to be confused again but it's all about understanding um, this walk and so how Yah has um, conditioned things to be I know it's freezing up a little bit on me all of a sudden so uh, just bear with me one moment here let me see if I can fix that just give me one second Yeah, it's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just need to run a tool real quick. Just bear with me one second. Okay, I hope it's not freezing up still. It's freezing up on me a little bit now, so. I can't seem to get my. Just bear with me one moment. I, I'm not sure I understand what's going on with my browser here now. Okay, there we go. Okay. It's still low output. Okay, well, let's just go on with the lesson. And it may freeze up on me. If it frees up, just listen to the lesson. But um, let's go right into this. Um, Understanding and balance cancel out confusion. Okay. Now, if I were to ask you what is truth, what would you say? Hmm? Well, we can go with the scripture. Yahushua said, I am the truth, right? We know what he says. He says he's the truth. But we know that there are other things in life that's other than, um, that seems other than Yahushua. Well, actually, it's not other than him. Uh, a good example is it's true that the sun shines, right? 
it's true that um, rain comes from the clouds, right? Well, when we say Yahushua is truth, well, where does all, all that come, stuff come from? It still comes from him. <laughs> so he is truth, okay? But understanding is something that you must have because you could come into the truth and more and more truth, right? More and more knowledge, but without that understanding, it, it, it almost makes it so um, confusion can come, if you know what I mean, if you don't have that understanding. Now, there is something that's called discernment. So you got to have the ability to discern different things based on what you know, what you understand. But if you don't understand much, then you can be vulnerable to um, confusion. So, I'm going to tell you, this is the reason why the Most High said, I'm going to send you the Ruach HaKadosh that's going to lead and guide you into all truth. Now, I'll tell you why that is so important that you get this, that the Ruach HaKadosh is going to lead and guide you into all truth. This is why it's so important, okay? Because Satan, our adversary, has a very cunning way of deceiving people. Okay? I want you to understand how he works. When Yahushua HaMashiach was um, in the wilderness and Satan came to tempt him, I want you to think about it, right? How did he tempt him? You remember? He came and he tempted him and he actually used scripture, didn't he? Now I'm going to go to that. Let's go to that. That's in Matthew. And uh, if I'm correct, it's Matthew chapter... Four, and it says, "Then was Yahushua led up in, of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was after he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the son of Elohim, command these stones to be made bread.'" As it is written, "Man shall not live by bread alone." And this is what Yahushua said to him. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Elohim. Now, I want you to pay attention to something here, right? When Satan came to him, he had already ended his fast. Pay attention. He had already ended his fast, and afterwards he was hungry. So, it was time to eat. And Satan said, if you be the son of Elohim, command these stones to be made bread. Now, he could have easily said, yeah, that's right, I am the son of Elohim, and I can't command these stones to be made bread. Why didn't he do it? <laughs> because Satan came to him and told him, if you be the son of Elohim, I don't have to prove none to you, Satan. I go, I go 41 days if I have to, then to do it because you told me to command these stones to be made bread. Are you listening? Now, pay attention, right? Let's keep reading. Then the devil took him up into the holy city and set up him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If you be the son of man, cast thyself down. Now notice this here. The first time when Satan spoke to him, Satan did not quote any scriptures. But when Yahushua quoted scriptures to him, Satan said, Oh, okay, well, since you quote scriptures, I can quote them too. Wow, are you hearing me? Watch what he says here. And he said unto him, If you be the son of, of Elohim, cast thyself down, for it is written. And he going to quote Psalms here. He said, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest thy cast the, uh, dash thy foot against the stone. So Satan here is quoting scripture. And <laughs> Yahushua said to him, Again it is written, Thou shalt not tempt Yahuwah my Elohim. So, Satan is using scripture to try to 
tempt Yakusha to do something wrong. Are you, are you paying attention to this? Right? Listen to what I'm saying here. So Satan knows how to use scripture. Wow. And he knows how to use scripture to get what he wants from folks. Mm, mm, mm. That's why he has many false prophets and many teachers, false teachers that are out here. Because he knows how to use those scriptures. I mean, what did you think? Satan's been around for thousands of years. Huh? He was around before the first letter of the scriptures was ever printed. And he knows more than what you see in the scriptures that's there. I don't know if you really heard what I just said. He knows more than what you see. That's in, when you hold up uh, the scriptures from cover to cover, he knows more about what you see that's there. Because he knows what's been taken out and he knows what's missing. You understand what I'm saying? So you gotta you gotta know what you're dealing with when you're dealing with Satan. He knows how to use scripture. So don't be amazed. Oh, that brother know how to quote scripture. You you also pulled in because somebody know how to quote scripture. Didn't Shaul Paul tell you that Satan's ministers and Satan, he said Satan can be transformed into an angel of light? And then he also saying his ministers can also be transformed into ministers of the gospel. Uh, didn't he say that? That they can be transformed into good ministers? So you got to pay attention. Listen to what I'm saying here. Just listen to me here. Because I'm going to show you something here, right? Watch this, right? So now we got Satan quoting scripture here. And he didn't twist it. He quoted it, right? He just used it wrongly against the Messiah, right? So now let's keep reading. And again, the devil taking him up into the seen high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory. And I said unto him, all these I will give unto you if thou fall down and, fall down and worship me. And you shall say unto him, get thee behind me, say, for it is written, thou shalt worship Yahuwah thy Elohim, and him only will I serve. But then the devil said, okay, all right. He left him after that because he said, I ain't, ain't, no, ain't no point. <laughs> Basically, ain't no point. Yahushua knew the scriptures too. But here's the thing you got to understand. Sometimes Satan, he uses scriptures and he twists them. And sometimes he twists the scripture and takes a little bit out of it to try to bring about the deception that he wants. Now watch this. Let me give you a good example of that, right? Now I want you to pay attention. I'm going to tell you how Satan tells lies. And watch this, right? So Satan has a truth, Right? Now, watch this. Let's say that there is a very important information about this one particular man. Right? And this information goes out that this man had on a red shirt. And you know this particular man, whatever his name may be, we can call him John. Had on a red shirt. And this information gets passed down through history. And through history, translators start to translate that red a little different. They start to tell you, ah, oh, it was really a light red shirt. Okay? So it goes from red to light red. Next thing you know, uh, um, it's being translated as having a pink shirt. Okay? Down through history, more time passes on. And next thing you know, he wore a pink shirt because he was gay. Mm. Are you listening to me? So then, when you come and you see the information about the guy, right? This particular man, John, all the information about him is true. But then they get to the point where they talk about his shirt being pink. And this other thing about him being gay or something else that's crazy about him, right? And he said, oh, you know what? Let's just throw that whole story out. When, in fact, there was only one thing changed, and that was the color of his shirt. You get what I'm saying? This is how Satan likes to tell lies. This is how he likes to twist lies. Because he knows if I can twist one thing there, if I can twist this one thing, then 
they will throw the whole thing out and they'll rule it as nothing. Right? Now, I want you to understand this because I want to share some things with you, right? Now, we know that the Council of Nice, okay, which was called by the Emperor Constantine back in 325 AD, okay, we know that during that time they were trying to set certain things in order, right? And so you have it when they were um, canonizing the scripture, which was they were bringing into the uh, into the scriptures what books that they all the people agree on that these people particular people agree on are the books that we're going to have and call our scriptures or the Bible. You know, we're going to pick which ones we want. Okay, watch this. When you look up the term canonized scripture, this is what it means. It says, it's a set of texts or books which a particular religious community regards as authoritative scripture. Hmm. A religious community? Who are these people of this religious community? Interesting, huh? Who are these people? And who are those that interpret it the manuscripts. So then when you look at this whole thing, you have to look at them and say, well, man, well, wait a minute then. Well, I got to be careful then as to um, just only accept what they have put in the Bible. Right? Because now we find out that there are hundreds of books that wasn't even included in the Bible because some religious community deemed it not to be righteous enough or as they put it here authoritative scripture mm. so then now we got to ask yourself okay now what do I do with all of this information here pay attention okay I want you to pay attention to this okay so then now we come across all these different books right because we talk about a lot of this. we use a lot of these books right but let me tell you what I see happens from time to time I never forget. I, I shared a book with a particular brother, okay, and it was the Shepherd of Hermas, okay. This brother read the Shepherd of Hermas, and right away when he got into the Shepherd of Hermas after the first few chapters, he was like, "Man, this is incredible." He said, "Man, I, I'm I'm reading stuff here that just this blowing me away. It's so incredible, right?" So then all of a sudden, let me tell you what happens. So as he get to read the Shepherd of Hermas, finally when he got done with it. He called me up. He said, brother, I want to talk to you about something. I said, yeah, go ahead and talk to me. He said, I absolutely love the Shepherd of Hermes book. He said, but I came across one scripture. And this one scripture just didn't sit well with me at all. And I already knew what scripture it was. And that's something because I read it. And when he said it to me, I said, yeah, I already know the scripture you're talking about. He said, you do? I said, yeah. He said, is it this? I said, yeah, that's the scripture. He said, so what do you do with that? And he said, that, that seemed like it's off. I said, it probably is off. And he was like, well, man, that makes me want to throw the whole book out. I said, really? Well, why do that make you want to throw the whole book out? Huh? So you have found out that one item could be off in this book. And so now you want to throw the whole book out. Well, I got news for you Bible thumpers out there, okay, that carry around the King James Version. There are a lot of errors in the King James Version. <laughs> and a lot of contradiction. A lot of say, no, it ain't no contradiction. But yes, it is. And I can point some of these out to you, and you will be shocked. They're obvious contradictions, right? And some scholars have no way of explaining it. The only way they can explain it is they say that the translators must have messed up when they were getting, when they were talking about this right here because it don't line up with this right here in the scriptures. Are you hearing me? <laughs> So basically, what do you do then? You know what you do? You got to be wise. You got to be balanced, right? That's like somebody bring you a box, right? They bring you a box of, um, uh, let me think of something. A box of um, books. Let's go with that. A box of books. And they say, hey, we got a box of children's books here for your children. And you say, oh, this is nice, you know. 
great, awesome, right? And so you go on through these books, you're like, this is cool, right? He gave me a box. Now, do you just take that box and just hand it to your kids? No, you want to know what's in that box, right? Right? So you go in the box and you pull out one book that's like, oh, no. I cannot allow my kids to have this book. This is garbage here. Then you come across a fairy tale book, like an Aladdin book. You come across another one about, um, um, uh, name of fairy tale, Sinbad, or some of this other stuff, uh, uh, Snow White and the, and the, how many dwarfs was it? Seven, Seven dwarfs. <laughs> or evolution. You come up, you say, no, 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 let's get this stuff out of here. Do you just throw the whole box out? No, because some of the books there may be excellent books for your children to learn, right? You have got to become balanced. You got to get to the point to where you are a truth seeker and you have your ears and your eyes are exercised in the Ruach so that you can discern spiritual things and so that you can discern truth. The spirit of Yahuwah will lead and guide you into all truth. See, that's why people, when they come across uh, lost books, especially like the Testament of Solomon, and they see some of the things that, oh, oh, wait a minute, this is all. Uh, oh, wait a minute, I don't agree with this. Wait a minute, I don't agree with that. They try to get rid of that whole book. That's because they don't understand how things work. You got to be able to dis dissect truth. You got to be able to go in and dissect and say, okay, I see now. This is truth right here. But this right here, okay, I'm going to take you and put you up here because this ain't lining up. Unless y'all can give me something that'll line this up with the rest of this, that's going to stay on the shelf there. But I'm going to go on and use this here because it fits the puzzle that the Ruach has been giving me. It's leading, it's going in the direction that the Ruach is guiding me. This is actually how you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be well balanced. As it relates to your seeking and your getting understanding from Yahuwah. It says in all I get and get understanding. I've seen it so many times. People that come across the scripture, right? One thing in the scripture is, oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, It says here that David is going to sit on the throne. Oh, so ain't no Messiah, y'all. Oh, man, let's get rid of the whole New Testament now. Let's throw it all out now. That's because people don't have understanding. And they're leaning into their own understanding. But let me share something with you, right? I want you all to understand something. Yah is not a dummy. Okay? Yah has put snares and traps out here. And filters out here. That's going to filter you right on out of the kingdom if your heart ain't right. Are you hearing me? If your heart ain't right. These traps and snares and filters, he have allowed. And yeah, the devil is setting these traps. He's setting these filters and all this stuff. That's why he told, he said, he said, Satan, he told Peter, Satan want to sift you, Peter. Like we. He want to sift you. He want to filter you on out of here, man. But he told Peter, he said, but guess what? Upon you, I'm going to build my rock and the very gates of hell won't prevail against it. So what am I trying to say to you here? I'm trying to say to you that Yah has set things in order. And if you don't have a true heart to seek Him, to seek His Spirit, you will be lost. Are you hearing me? You will be lost. You better seek Him for understanding. You better be well balanced. You better quit allowing the um, confusion to creep into your mind because you didn't seek him for truth. You didn't seek him for understanding. Oh, no, I'm just so understanding now. I just don't understand nothing. No more. I'm just so confused now. You know, it's just like you come across a passage in scripture. Here, here's a good one. Here's a good one people get confused about. Right? You got one part of the scripture that says, Love not the world, neither the things of the world. For he that loved the world, the love of my father is not in him. And then you come across the scripture, he says, for he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? And so you see those two scriptures, wait, but, but he loved the world? Well, wait a minute, he loved, and you just get all mixed up because you can't decipher what that, you can't sit there and say to yourself, well, wait a minute, it got to be an understanding to this, right? These two worlds that's being spoken of here can't be the same, right? It just can't be the same, right? Can't be. Just like when you look at the scripture and it talks about the fire that the three Hebrew boys were throwing in was a physical fire, right? 
But then the scripture says he's going to try us with fire. Do you think that fire he's trying us with is a physical fire? Or is it trials and tribulations? Are you hearing me? That's why you can't be confused. you got to be well balanced. And I agree. I know there's a lot of teachers out here that's teaching all kinds of stuff, right? They throw, they, they throw all kinds of stuff at you, and you sitting there, and you sitting there, and you say, man, wait, wait a minute, what now, what now, what now? You better, you better do your due diligence. You better, the scripture says, um, study, huh? It says, study to show yourself approved, a workman, huh? Rightly dividing the word of Elohim, rightly dividing it, huh? Someone that needed not to be ashamed, don't be ashamed of his word, but rightly dividing it. You got to understand what that means. Otherwise, you got to put your time in. Right? Do you know the number of times I get people sending me emails with questions? They don't take one moment to even get in the scriptures or get on the internet or research anything they sell. I want an easy hand me, feed me. Feed me bad like a sheep. Feed me. Huh? You ready to so somebody just come with a spoon and shove whatever in your mouth? Huh? You need to know what you're getting. Get in that word yourself. Huh? See, I grew up in a time. Let me tell you the difference between now and back then, the time that I grew up. In the time that I grew up, I didn't have the internet. Right? When I started my journey with Yah. I didn't there was no internet. And so back when I first received the Holy Spirit. I couldn't get on the internet and go to a chat room and go to some video and look at somebody teaching about this and teaching about that, right? And all the ministers at the at the assembly that I was going to, they had wives and jobs and the kids and, and they didn't have time to just sit down with me or get on the phone with me every chance to try to talk to me about nothing. So I had to put in my time to dig into the scriptures and get an understanding. Right? You want understanding and you won't even want to open your Bible. Some people don't even read their scriptures. You understand what I'm saying? You got to put your time in. You got to put that time in. Huh? You got to put it in. And if you're confused about something, let me tell you who I would ask a question to. Yah. If I was confused about anything, I would go to Yah and I would say, Yah, help me out here. I'm trying to understand this. Help me out here. I remember when I first started that journey on researching his name. I said, Father, yeah, here's a problem I'm having. And this is this was a true, true prayer. I said, Father, yeah, here's a problem I'm having. I'm seeing that your name is Yah in the Old Testament. I said, but I don't see it in the New Testament. Where is it in the New Testament? I said, because it seems like um I, I need I need to see it in the New Testament. And I, when I prayed this prayer to the Father, right, he spoke to me and said, it's there. And I heard him loud and clear. I said, okay, he told me it's here. And I go looking again, read, looking through the scriptures. I said, Father, yeah, I'm not seeing your name in the New Testament. Where's your name in the New Testament? And he kept telling me, it's there. And I said, well, the translators did a good job of having it. <laughs> you see how they hid it in the Old Testament, right? And then he told me. It's there in Revelations. And it's also there in some of my patriots' names in the New Testament. Like Matthew, <laughs> Matthew's name, right? And then when he took me to Revelations, I saw, he put Alleluia in Revelations. And I knew right then to say, oh, they were praising you there. There's Yah right there. And so I, I'm telling you, you got to get to the point to where you seeking Yah to the point to where when you have questions and you need understanding, go to Yah, get on your knees, pray. It's for you to do that because Yah got so many filters, right? so many filters and so many um, 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 snares and traps out here. Man, you better pull up, you better quit running on the internet trying to get your answer. You better do your research. If you go on the internet, you better take that thing and say, okay, I hear what he's saying, and I hear what he's saying, and I see what this, this article is saying, I see what this book is saying, but you better do your due diligence and search, research it for yourself, because you'll be all over the place. I'm telling you right now, you will be so lost. I've seen people get so confused in the scriptures today, just find just threw it all out and became an atheist. Are <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? They done became an atheist because it's just too much for them. 
too much, too hard to put it together. Let me tell you something. I used to put puzzles together years ago when I was a child. And I just didn't put any kind of puzzle together. I put complicated puzzles together. Puzzles, thousand word puzzles, two thousand word puzzles together, right? And some of these puzzles would be so complicated, right? And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, right? Watch this, right? I could take a 2,000 piece puzzle and put it in front, in front of a four-year-old, three-year-old, or four-year-old. That four-year-old would look at all those pieces and go out her mind. <laughs> Am I right? She will look at that puzzle and will just go. It's too much. Well, that's why a lot of people bail out because they just babes. It's too much. They don't even know how to deal with a puzzle like that, right? But me, I knew how to deal with it. I knew, first of all, let me separate all my edges away from the other pieces. And then I said, okay, once I got my edges separated, okay, now let me put these edges together. Now how you put the edges together? You match by color. I said, okay, so if I got any red here, any orange here, any blue here, whatever, I match those edges together and I blend them and then I look at the main picture and put them together. Then I got my edges done. Then when I get to the rest of the pieces, I have to turn them all over and separate those pieces into colors again. Then I, that's how I was able to put together um, um, two, three thousand piece puzzles. You understand? Because I had the patience to sit there and go through it. I didn't get frustrated and just throw the whole puzzle away. <laughs> you understand? So you gotta have patience. And you gotta, you can't be a babe. You gotta be to the point, because I'm gonna tell you something. A 2003 piece puzzle will scare a young person, right? But watch this. It's more in, more puzzles in Yah's word <laughs> than, than a million piece puzzle. You know what I just said? <laughs> it's more pieces in Yah's puzzle of understanding than a million piece puzzle. Yes. Is that vast? This is why you got to be patient. You got to have patience and you got to be balanced and you got to take a little bit at a time and you can't get frustrated. You got to look and say, okay, this worked right here. This is working right here. I know this is working. And so, until I find a piece to fit right here and fit there, I'm going to just have to leave it like this. I'm not going to force nothing. Right? See, the problem with understanding and knowledge, we're trying to force pieces that don't fit. It just don't fit, and you trying to fit it in there, and it just don't fit. You know it don't fit. You look at it and look all crazy, but you're going to psych your mind out and think that it fits, right? And so now... You done messed up one piece, right? You know how it goes with a puzzle. You done messed up one, and now you keep trying to put that puzzle together. It ain't going to work. Now you're going to mess up another one, then another one, then another one. And next, next thing you know, now your, your puzzle is so messed up, you can't get no understanding from it, right? Huh? This is what it's about. Notice what we're talking about here. I want you to understand this. This is why we got to be balanced. This is why we got to get understanding so it can cancel out all of this confusion. You understand? <clears throat> now, I'm going to tell you something that I do. When I'm researching these books, a new book come out. Now, I'm going to explain some to you, okay? There's a book called The Testament of Solomon, right? And there's another one called the Keys of Solomon. Okay? When I did my research on the Testament of Solomon, I discovered that the book, the oldest manuscript that was found, was found between the 1st and 3rd century. <clears throat> which is roughly before the time of Constantine. It was early in the 1st century. But when I researched the Keys of Solomon, nope. The Keys of Solomon is actually a book they use in witchcraft. And if I'm correct, the Kabbalah Jews may even use it. Hmm. The Key of Solomon 
when I did a little research on it was a lot newer it wasn't it came after the time of Constantine the key of Solomon and if I was to research it here <clears throat> just give me a minute I'll go to Google and I'll give you a date and I'll show you it okay now the key of Solomon dates back to the 14th or 15th century the Renaissance period whoa <laughs> so I tell you right there oh no throw that one out of here <laughs> that's a recent book get it out of here right and so that's how you got to do your research so with a lot of these books when I bring a book to the table and I tell you hey y'all the Shepherd of Hermes that's because I done research when that particular manuscript how old it is and the dates of it and it was actually bound between Romans and Acts Hmm, isn't that amazing? In some of your old manuscripts. But of course, these consoles or these, these religious groups took it out for whatever reason. And you know it had to be you know they got reasons why. Then I and and, and, t and let me tell you something, I can honestly tell you why they took out the Testament of Simon. Because there's so much truth there on how these demons work and move. When I first read it, I knew it just from reading it. I knew it. I said, oh man, I know this is a fact because I already experienced and saw some of these things in the world, how these demons move. So when I was reading the Testament of Simon, it was confirming things that I already knew through the Spirit because I was led in the Spirit. Do you understand? And so that's why it's, impo it's important that you, that, you, that you get an understanding about things and do your due diligence. Do your research, like I said. Do your research. That is so important. Okay? Do your research. If you're going to get these old books, get these old books and look and see the dates of these books. And one of the things I noticed um, in the books where, in the Testament of Solomon, where the demons were saying things like, uh, if you call my name and say this, then I'll be cast out or whatever. And I say, well, I don't know if I want to call your name. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just don't know if I want to call their name. But Yahushua did ask him. He asked demons before. He said, what is your name? Well, it must have been the reason why he asked their name. Maybe it's because so he can tell them to go. Legion, go! You know what I mean? So who knows? Maybe that's why. But you just got to understand. You got to be cautious. And you got to use wisdom. And you got to be led of the Spirit. Everything that you read in some of these missing books are not um, completely right because just like the, the Bible, some of these things weren't interpreted right. I'm just, I'm telling you it's like it is. If you do your research, you already know about Sabbath and, and Sunday. If you do your research on that alone, it proves what I'm saying about the Bible, especially the King James Version. Okay? So, I'm not going to hold you... Um, too much longer. I just want you to understand how you do have to compare um, um, other manuscripts with knowledge that you've already received from their spirit and with with scriptures that you have proven to be right. It, it You shouldn't come across a scripture that's going to totally tear down what you already got. If it does, then you may need to just get rid of that. Either it fits or you or get rid of it. Okay? Now, one caution though Sometimes you gotta wait for understanding, so you can't still can't throw it completely out. Do like I do. I, I said this before. When I'm studying things and I don't get the understanding on something, I set it aside until the most high give me understanding on it. You know, I just set it aside. I did some very uh, in-depth studies years ago on the rapture. And I was challenged by several pastors and ministers that were on the internet about the rapture. And so I said, well, let me dig into this thing, dig into it. So when I got to digging into it, I said, man, it, it, it really appears that these pastors are right. So I said, what they're saying about the rapture, I mean, when they were basically saying that, um, that it's only a post-tribulation rapture, the rapture or the catching away, okay? Notice I'm saying the catching away, okay? The catching away, um... They were saying basically oh, it's only a post catching away, so it happens after the tribulation. And so I was like, well, what I'm seeing here, 
only deals with that. But the spirit kept telling me, no, it's more to it than that, right? So I kept saying, okay, well, let me just put it on the shelf here, you know, until you give me more understanding on this, on this catching away or rapture thing. Let me just do more and more research. So after I started doing more and more research, I started praying because the research wouldn't turn it up much. And so I prayed and the Most High started opening the door and giving me revelation on certain things. And when he gave me that revelation, it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. And so I was able to say, wow, I get now why they see, say this and why people are saying that. And I understand why they're getting this mixed up with that over there and that mixed up with this over here. And it made so much sense. But guess what? I went through a period of a good two, maybe three years. I'm not sure how much time it was. But I went through a good long period where I was trying to get understanding on it and I had to literally wait. Some things you have to wait on. You understand what I'm saying? Some things you absolutely have to wait on. Hallelujah. So, basically, this understands that it is the Ruach, the Holy Spirit, set up our spirit, that's going to lead and guide you into all truth. And if you don't have it, you got to wait for it. You got to seek Him for it. You got to let Him feel you so He can lead and guide you into all truth. And guess what? You don't necessarily have to be filled with it in order for him to lead and guide you because he led and guide me to receiving the Spirit. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? He can lead and guide you, right, without being filled with the Ruach. But seek being filled with the Ruach and he will lead and guide you to where you can be filled, where he will actually fill you with the Ruach if you're not filled. Hallelujah. But that's the key. You must be led of the Spirit. And in doing this, Yah will give you good understanding, and this good understanding will give you balance, and that balance will give you discernment, and you will gain more truth, more revelation, more understanding, thus canceling out confusion. Hallelujah. Well, on that note, family, I want to tell you I love you, and may the Most High bless you, and I hope this clears some things up as it relates to confusion and seeking Yah. For understanding. Well, on that note, I'm going to say shalom, family. to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.